Akron, Ohio. Population 10,006. The year is 1870. The same year a young physician, Dr. Benjamin Franklin Goodrich, came to town to found a rubber factory. Photography itself is very young. Akron is a city created by the Ohio Canal, whose 21 locks in a two-mile stretch delayed passengers half a day at this point in crossing the North-South Continental Divide. It was also in 1870 that the Ohio Universalist Convention decided to locate its college at Akron to the delight of the culturally-minded Daily Beacon. Although it was intended to be a centenary of universalism in America, by the time Buchtel College was dedicated and opened to students in 1872, it already had acquired more the character of a municipal college than of a private denominational school, due in part to the liberal religion of the rural universalists and in part to the generous financial support of Summit County citizens, vigorously led by businessman John Buchtel. And it was appropriate, therefore, that the college dominated Akron's horizon. Built on the site of old Spicer Hill Cemetery, Buchtel College was a remarkable structure. This single massive building, 240 feet long and five stories high, was a complex of men's and women's dormitories, lecture halls and classrooms, a chapel room, gymnasium, a dining hall, a natural history museum, and a library that was open to students one hour each week so that its impressive Bierce collection might be admired. A student paid $30 a year for tuition, plus an additional $10 for room rent if he lived in Buchtel Hall. This rental charge, plus a forbidding $2.75 a week board bill, caused many students to live off campus, and the dormitories often went only partly filled. The early years were stormy, as a result of denominational tensions, the college had three presidents in its first eight years. Buchtel's first president, Reverend Sullivan McAllister, a Universalist minister from New Hampshire, served until 1878, when he resigned in a dispute with the local Universalist congregation, to be succeeded by 37-year-old Reverend Everett Rexford, who resigned after only two years because of local criticism of one of his sermons. But the college matured during its 16 years under Dr. Orello Cohn, who introduced the elective system in 1882 and broadened the narrow curriculum not only to teach the classical fundamentals of Western civilization, but also to teach skills that would prepare students for the professions. The early faculty of seven included the triumvirate of mathematician Elias Fraunfelter, a former captain in the Union armies, language professor Carl Colby, born in the German Empire and a Union bandmaster during the Civil War. And Professor Charles M. Knight, a physicist and chemist in charge of science instruction, who, with student help, built a laboratory in the basement of Old Buchtel. But the really tenacious guiding spirit of those early years was unquestionably John R. Buchtel. The college was aptly named, for without John Buchtel, there would have been no college. An unlettered community leader and businessman, whose Buckeye mower works were appropriately overshadowed by the college he helped build, Buchtel was not content with contributing his entire fortune of half a million dollars to the college. He paternalistically dominated the board of trustees, personally selected presidents, and held together a sometimes dissident faculty until his death in 1892 when he was mourned in a special edition of the Buchtelite. John Buchtel and the college were truly inseparable. Those early years saw the first student publications, the first newspaper, the Buchtel Record, began in 1882 with a circulation of 54 students and 63 alumni. 
it became the Bokhtalite in 1889. The first annual, the Argo, became the Bokhtal in 1882. And after a lapse of some years, the Tell Book in 1911. Athletics began in earnest with the building of Krauss Gym in 1888 and Bokhtal Field in 1892. In 1893, Bokhtal's first football team hired coach John Heisman, after whom the Heisman Trophy was named. Student clubs were formed, including a photography club, an art club, and a woman's drill team whose drill weapons were brooms. The 80s also saw the birth of fraternities and sororities on campus. Most of these societies had to settle for a meeting room in Bookdale Hall, but this didn't deter the hijinks prior to initiation. Phi Delta Theta had rented an upstairs room in Schumacher's downtown and the Lone Star Fraternity was one of the first to have its own house. Supplementing his modest salary, the president now had the use of a president's house. Then on the night of December 20th, 1899, disaster struck. For more than three hours, old Buchtel's death torch lighted the sky as all the horse-drawn fire companies in Akron fought in vain with their steam-driven equipment. Lit by gas mantles whose open flames were fed by a gas-generating plant in the basement, it is remarkable that the building had survived for 27 years. By morning, only the outer shell remained. But the bleak morning of the 21st also saw the landscape scattered with colored handbills, announcing a nine o'clock meeting at the Universalist Church, followed two days later by a meeting of business leaders in the parlors of the National City Bank. Once again, the city responded to the needs of the college. Classes moved in the main to a partitioned off Krauss gym Meanwhile, a new $50,000 Bookdale Hall rose from the ashes, built with contributions from not only Akron businesses and universalists everywhere, but from students, faculty and alumni, from Akron factory girls, washerwomen, post office clerks, newsboys, and from firemen who had fought the blaze. The building was dedicated in 1901. This spirit of town and gown cooperation led to Bookdale's becoming the Municipal University of Akron in 1913, under the leadership of President Park Colby, son of the original faculty member Carl Colby. 1913 was also remembered in Akron as the year of the great snowstorm. Automobiles were replacing buggies, and electric trolleys were supplanting the horse cars. Out-of-town students were arriving by train. The campus was growing. In addition to Krauss Gym and Bookdale Hall, there was an astronomical observatory and the Charles M. Knight Chemical Laboratory. The observatory had been built in 1887 by Dr. C.S. Howe of the Mathematics Department. Knight Laboratory had been completed in 1909 with the help of a Carnegie grant, and here Dr. Knight taught the world's first courses in rubber chemistry. A Bureau of Industrial Research was formed, and a College of Engineering was founded under Dean Fred Ayer, who pioneered a cooperative education program with Akron Industry. A School of Home Economics was established in Curtis Cottage in 1914 the same year that Mrs. Elizabeth A. Thompson became Akron U's first Dean of Women. In the year it became a municipal university, Akron had an enrollment of 198 students. In the next nine years, this figure would multiply to more than 2,000. In World War I, the university saw service training Army tire repair units. The war had also founded the Students' Army Training Corps, which later became the ROTC, 
a group which often was a center of student controversy in the 20s and 30s. It was in 1927 that the Book Delight won a Scripps Howard contest as the best college paper in Ohio. 1928 saw the establishment of the University Theater in the basement of Colby Hall, which also housed the Pierce Library. And in 1929, during the administration of President George Zook, the Guggenheim Airship Institute was founded, adjacent to the Goodyear Air Dock dirigible hangar at Akron City Airport. Dr. Theodore Troller was assistant director of the Institute, which was equipped with a unique vertical wind tunnel. The tragic end of the U.S. Navy's Akron and Macon led to the eventual demise of the Institute, but the aviation interest it had fostered on the university campus left the Glider Club and the University Cloudhoppers in its wake. During World War II, under an agreement with the War Production Board, the university operated a synthetic rubber pilot plant and research laboratory on Wilbeth Road. The plant is now a part of the Firestone Synthetic Rubber Company. During the war years, the university was under the administration of President Heselton Simmons, who was succeeded by Norman P. Auburn in 1951. It was under the leadership of Dr. Auburn that the university was to experience its greatest growth in both physical facilities and academic programs. Today, as throughout its history, the University of Akron is building for tomorrow. A state university now since 1967, many prominent names from Akron's past and some from its dynamic present are honored in the names of its buildings. Booktel Hall, today's administration building, is the only structure remaining from Booktel College days. Simmons Hall is now one of the older buildings. Formerly located in Simmons, the physics department has now moved to a refurbished Ayer Hall, adjacent to Knight Hall, in front of which stands the much-painted rock that was the class memorial of 1880. East of Knight is the College of Education, which turned out its first teachers in 1922. This building is across from Gardner Student Center, with its popular tiled courtyard. The student center was recently enlarged, displacing Old Kraus Gym. On the other side of Buchtel Hall is the College of Business Administration and the School of Law. The same building houses the C. Blake McDowell Law Library and the John S. Knight Auditorium. And east of this point is Colby Hall, home of the Instructional Television Center, radio station WAUPFM, as well as the College of Liberal Arts and the University Theater. Through Colby's arches can be seen Memorial Hall, scene of semi-annual commencement exercises. graduating classes of more than 2,000 students stand in overwhelming contrast to Buchtel's entire student body in the 1880s. At the other end of the campus is Harry P. Schrank Hall, whose sculptured walls house the Community and Technical College. To better serve the needs of area residents and industry, the C&T College operates day and night, 
offering two-year associate degrees, as well as Bachelor of Technology degrees in programs embracing four academic divisions. Adjacent to Schrank Hall is the Norman Paul Auburn Science and Engineering Center, whose TV-equipped lecture halls are the finest in the nation. Auburn Center is the home of the Institute of Polymer Science and the College of Engineering, as well as the departments of mathematics and biology. The facility has three tiers of parking decks below. These facilities accommodate many of the university's research projects, whose results are building for tomorrow a foundation of scientific and technological resources. Dr. Coleman Major, head of chemical engineering, is working on a space-oriented project. For man to be able to get to other planets, he will have to be capable of regenerating his own life support media. If we could, for example, recycle body fluids, instead of treating them as waste to be disposed of, we'd be doing on a small scale what happens naturally in our larger world. Botanist Walter Maceor and several of his students are investigating the influence of environmental factors on the basic growth patterns of simple plants under a National Science Foundation grant. Another botanist, Dr. Warren Stoutemeyer, is studying orchids and carnivorous plants. Under a grant from the National Institute of Dental Research, biologists Dale Jackson and Roger Keller have been investigating the adhesion systems barnacles use to attach themselves to host surfaces. All of this seems in keeping with Horace Greeley's words in 1871, when the cornerstone for Bookdell College was laid. This, then, I apprehend, is the proper work of the college, to appreciate and measure, and commend the gigantic strides which physical science is making in our day, yet not be swept away by them. In the Institute of Polymer Science, Physicist Nick Hilliard studies the physical properties of foamed elastomers. Mechanical engineer Eberhard Meinecke fabricates polymeric capillary tubes for use in artificial kidneys. And physical chemist Don McIntyre is working out a process for the desalinization of ocean water by osmosis through microscopically thin polymeric films. The principal rubber companies of the city have long had a synergistic relationship with the Institute since the days when it was the Bureau of Industrial Research under Dr. C. M. Knight. And over the years, these companies have been largely run by University of Akron alumni, men like Russell DeYoung, Lee Jackson, and John W. Thomas. Anticipating its burgeoning student enrollment, the university has been constructing new high-rise residence halls and adjacent dining facilities on the north edge of the campus which now house over 1,300 students. These waves of expansion have largely washed out old student hangouts like Nippy's Nook, the Book to Eat, known to several generations as Nick the Greeks, is now a part of the economics department, and Macedonian Nick Yanko has gone on to bigger things. Of the old list that included Terry's, and the Akron U confectionery, only Schroeder's remains. 22 fraternities and sororities now provide fellowship for university students. The Greek brothers and sisters may dress differently, but they haven't changed much since the resurgence of the societies at the turn of the century. That's Charlie Bulger in the center. Bulger was an undergraduate when the Lone Star Safaris to Young's Tavern Sample Room were a legend in themselves. 
some of these fraternity brothers are reunited at today's annual Hilltoppers Tours. At these events, old grads and friends of the university gather to visit an area industry, tour the changing countryside, and mostly to talk to old friends. Alumni activities are administered by alumni director Alan Boyer and his staff, who take their guidance from the Alumni Council, a group composed of and elected by university alumni to generate alumni participation in university affairs. Akron area alumni and their families host incoming freshmen each year at receptions given at their homes. With the help of many alumni, the city of Akron too is building for tomorrow. In the heart of town, the city is building a new Cascade Plaza. The new downtown library has opened its doors. And on Talmage Avenue, Mayor John Ballard dedicated the long-awaited Betta's Corners Bridge, drawing the Akron community and students alike to its sporting events is Lee Jackson Field, whose modern facilities contrast with the square-cornered track of Old Buchtel Field. The big football event is the Acme Zip Game in the Rubber Bowl. Some of the musicians in the university's marching band participate in the activities of the annual Fine Arts Festival. The 1969 festival included a performance of the Richard Rogers musical, The Boys from Syracuse. The world premiere of a new ballet performed by the Chamber Ballet of the University's Dance Institute. And an art show featuring university artists. The Fine Arts Festival also presented an experimental film program, a Dylan Thomas play, a fashion show, and concerts by the University Symphonic Band, the resident brass quintet, and one by classical guitarist Jim Kalau. As a result of the successful Challenge 70 campaign, the performing arts at Akron are to have a new home, located appropriately enough on the site of John Buchtel's old Buckeye Mower Works. Demolition of the Cotter Warehouse cleared the site for groundbreaking ceremonies in August of 1969. Attended by Governor James Rhodes, 
leaders of the Akron civic and industrial communities, and presided over by board chairman Harry Schrank and university president Norman P. Auburn. You know, Akron has been waiting for many years for a performing arts hall. The university has needed a suitable cultural facility for academic purposes for a long time. Today, happily, we break ground for the structure which will serve both the university and the community on a round-the-clock and around-the-calendar basis. Therefore, I think you'll agree with me, we can call this a memorable occasion. Edwin J. Thomas, for whom the hall is named, turned the first spadeful of earth, assisted by the governor, the mayor, and members of legislatures and the council. The Edwin J. Thomas Performing Arts Hall will stand as a lofty architectural monument to the unity between the city and the university with its 3,000-seat auditorium whose movable ceiling can create smaller halls for dramatic productions and recitals, it will be the cultural center of both communities. Thomas Hall represents a milestone in the ambitious development plans of President Auburn and the University Board of Trustees. Plans that include an expanded residence hall complex, and a tree-lined Buchtel Mall, leading to the ultimate University Park, extending the campus from Market Street to Exchange, from Broadway to the Expressway, 180 acres serving an enrollment of 25,000 students, an urban university, key to the future in its academic and research programs, as in its physical expansion plans, truly the University of Akron is building for tomorrow.